the vast number of engine builds by Callaway Customs is inconceivable. I will step you through my experience with this Pontiac 400 engine build. Hope you enjoy it. Welcome to Road Odyssey. Thank you for joining me. Please like and subscribe. I have my Facebook page. Join me there for daily updates. Back on April 17th, hidden in the rows of some of the Callaway Custom engine builds, is the 1970 Pontiac 400 engine block. Now, May 14th. This is a 1970 Pontiac 400 engine block, refurbished by a shop in Texarkana, Texas, so it's more precisely a 406.03 cubic inch block. These are some of the parts to be installed on the block. You might see the Edelbrock intake manifold, Edelbrock head kit, like uh, a slightly cammed cam, uh, roller rockers, melling cam, and lifters. Scott is doing a quick visual inspection of the new versus old cams. Scott is oiling the cam prior to install. As he does this, let me add that the customer is keeping the engine mm, very close to stock for a really smooth and easy drivetrain. With the cam in, he is next removing the crank's main bearing caps. If you don't see markings on these that indicate which cap goes where, then consider marking them yourselves. New main bearings were installed by the refurb company, so Scott only had to oil the surfaces before installing the crankshaft. He ensures oil is in the grooves and the edges of each bearing. The rear crankshaft oil seal is oiled and offset for better seating and sealing, so be careful about doing that right. He did a quick spin test before putting the main bearing caps back on, of which the caps are oiled and replaced. Each cap bolt has an assembly lube for allowing better or truer uh, torque values. He wrenched the cap bolts down, but not tightened just yet. He will do that later after the pistons are in. He flips the block over to begin installing the pistons. A picture of the dual timing chain and sprocket installed first. Then he begins work on the pistons, placing on the piston bearings and rings. Uh, the pistons are stock original. Now Scott places the piston in the piston ring compressor, puts the piston on the top of the block, and then gently taps the piston into the block with a hammer handle to be sure not to mar the piston head. While doing this, he feels for the piston rod to be sure it aligns with the drive shaft as the piston seats down onto the drive shaft. He installs the bottom piston rings and repeats and rinses for all eight pistons. Finally, he has marred to each cylinder and piston plus the direction of how the engine runs. I'll explain a little bit later. May 15th. 
Scott torqued down all of the bolts and installed the drive shaft powered oil pump. May 30th. I had turned my back for one second. Well, okay, about 10 plus days. And Scott had installed the heads, rockers and push rods, valve covers, exhaust manifolds, thermostat, front assembly, including the water pump and harmonic harmonic dampener, etc. Uh, so sorry I missed all that good stuff. Scott pours in 15 W50 break-in oil. Again, he numbered the cylinders and maintained notes on the engine because the Pontiac is different from Fords and Chevys. Pontiacs run in the opposite direction, which is only one difference for this build. He then primed the oil pump and hooked up a manual oil gauge and drill to verify oil pressure and try to see if any oil leaks would occur. Oh, there's a battery. Yep. <laughs> the distributor went in next, which is another difference. This has dual sets of points. So that's another very important thing regarding the coil and uh, the electrical a little bit there. Unfortunately, the plug wires were not the right ones because they were incorrectly packaged. So things stalled for a while. June 6th. Come this time, all Scott had time for was installing the starter. June 13th, all of the remaining holes not expected to be used were plugged up. Plug wires came in, got installed. The coil was mounted and installed, as well as the oil filter and carburetor, carburetor being a four-barrel Edelbrock AVS-2. The fuel rails and lines were connected. The AVS-2 sports an electronic choke. The Pontiac operates in the opposite direction of, of the Chevys and Fords, so plug wires in the distributor was all double-checked in that regard. Next day, June 14th, another look at some of the engines to be built and others that are completed. Now, back to the Pontiac on the engine run stand. Scott and Jason made the final connections and checked for errors. Uh, they did a test bump before proceeding. You got water in it? Oh, no, that probably be good. But we can see if it's bumped. Yeah, see the bump. You should uh, just be able to bump it. Oil is checked again and a large fan set up for better cooling. Scott verifies the floats and jets. Then to the first start. Check for problems like leaks, any kind of leak, bad connections, uh, etc. Then to see if the water pipe and thermostat was working. 
and to check oil pressure. that didn't seem to be working right so they took the whole thing outside and eventually the temps went back down correctly well so it seemed remained good. They let it idle a while as part of the break-in. They kept the RPM a little high before readjusting the idle. The temp would never stabilize correctly. Looked like a bad thermostat, so they ordered a new one. June 17th. Obviously, the new thermostat and coil came in and were replaced. They took it back outside for another test run. It did great might notice Scott made some quick and dirty exhaust pipes. So much better, safer, and not likely to burn up parts during longer break-in runs. Thermostat, well, it works great. was perfect, which they could actually see once I provided a large piece of cardboard for shade. This was a very good build, which is typical for Callaway Customs. I have watched and recorded many engine builds with them already. This 1970 Pontiac 400 was just a little more unique. The vehicle it will go in is unknown at this time, the engine might even be up for sale or trade in the future. The owner will store the engine until an opportunity presents itself. I want to thank Scott Jason and Alex Calloway for all the fun we had making this video. I want to thank you for watching this video. This is really an experimental kind of video of which I have other engine build videos possible if you are interested such as Chevy small blocks and big Ford FEs. Just let me know. With that, thank you so much, and please relax, take it easy, and I will see you later. Bye. Okay, too much.